Now that you can read and write chemical formulas and balance chemical reactions, it's time to talk about some simple types of chemical reactions. Just remember that in all chemical reactions, the mass of the reactants, the products going, or the chemicals, compounds going in, will be equal to the mass of the products coming out. That mass is not created or destroyed, that first law of thermodynamics, in a chemical reaction, but the atoms are rearranged, and that rearrangement is what we can see as evidence of chemical change. Incidentally, mass can be converted to energy in nuclear reactions, but that is well beyond the scope of this course. There are five basic types of chemical reactions we're going to be talking about. Synthesis, decomposition, combustion, and then the single and double replacement reactions. The first type is a synthesis reaction, which also can be called a formation or a combination reaction. All of those names you'll see. And in this type of reaction, two or more substances combine to form something new. So you are making something new. The substances that are combining can be elements or they can be compounds. Either one will work for a synthesis reaction. For example, we have an element plus an element making a compound in this reaction where we take magnesium and combine it with oxygen to make magnesium oxide. And that's what happens when you burn your sparklers at the 4th of July or New Year's holiday. That is the giving off all that um, light and heat is part of the reaction, but you're making magnesium oxide. Here's an example of two of an element and a compound combining to make a new compound where we have carbon monoxide, a very toxic gas that's produced by our combustion engines in our cars, combining with oxygen to make carbon dioxide, which although is not a wonderful substance to have around it, is much better than carbon monoxide. So this picture is showing a catalytic converter that we have in our cars that will turn carbon monoxide into carbon dioxide through a synthesis reaction. And then finally, we can have two compounds combining to make a more complex compound. So sulfur trioxide, which is one of the common pollutants in the air from um, industry, from factories, it can combine with water in the air to produce H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid. And that is what is found in acid rain, if you've heard about acid rain. Acid rain is not so acid that it'll dissolve your skin if it rains on you, but over time it is quite detrimental to plants, can um, de-leaf a lot of forested area, or it also can cause marble statues to lose their features and details if it is you know, falling on those statues over a number of years, as we see this example of what happened over 60 years to a particular statue. Then there's the decomposition reaction. And in this case, things decompose. A compound will break down into more simple substances. Most decompositions require an input of energy, but that can just be the energy, the heat energy that's present in the environment. You don't, you don't necessarily have to have um, energy added directly, you know, by a flame or something. Substances can decompose into elements or into other compounds, so it doesn't necessarily go all the way to the element level. <clears throat> so we have an example of a compound decomposing into elements here in this picture. We have mercury 2 oxide, which is decomposing into pure mercury, which we can see in the test tube here. And then oxygen, which is going to leave as a gas since it's an open test tube, and so it's not going to be present after you're done with this kind of a reaction. And in this case, we are adding some heat directly to make it happen faster. An example of a compound decomposing into more simple compounds is this example of calcium carbonate, which will decompose into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas again. Um, this is the setup here shown in the model. You can see again we're adding some heat with a Bunsen burner, and then the solid calcium oxide is left behind in the test tube. Carbon dioxide again goes off as a gas unless you collect it somehow. The third type of reaction is a combustion reaction. We typically think of this as burning, where a substance reacts with oxygen and it produces carbon dioxide and water vapor, heat, and light. So combustion reactions are what we use to give us heat and light. If there is not enough oxygen to turn the substance completely into carbon dioxide, water, and um, 
carbon dioxide and water, then you can get carbon monoxide or other carbon compounds such as soot. And most of the combustion reactions that we experience are ones that are incomplete or do not have enough oxygen, so we do see those other materials produced. Many of our combustion reactions are used with a hydrocarbon, a chemical compound that only contains hydrogen and carbon, because hydrocarbons have a large amount of chemical energy that can be released when they are combusted. So we have an example of a formula down here, C3H8, which is propane, like in your propane burners if you fry a turkey, and so it will react with the oxygen in the air to produce carbon dioxide and water vapor. It is most likely a, a fairly complete combustion reaction. You usually don't have a lot of other compounds produced in a propane combustion. And then we get to our replacement reactions. The single replacement reaction, as the name suggests, you have one element that's going to replace a similar element in a compound. So elements are just basically going to switch places. There are three ways that can happen. You can have a metal replacing a metal, as in this um, reaction example where we have aluminum reacting with copper 2 chloride to produce aluminum, aluminum chloride. And we should have copper. I have covered it with the picture. Oh my goodness. So you should have solid copper added to the end of this formula. Make sure you make the change on your, or it should be on your notes. Sorry, I didn't have a picture there. And so this is something that's very easy to do by putting aluminum foil into a solution of copper, <clears throat> copper 2 chloride. You will see this dark substance forming on the outside of the aluminum. It is not rust. It is actually copper that is coming out of the solution and replacing the aluminum. Metal can also replace hydrogen in two substances. In this case, it's hydrogen acting as if it is a metal, as if it actually lived on the left side of the periodic table. Remember, hydrogen is um, a little bit different because it sometimes can accept an electron and sometimes it can give up an electron. It can become like a metal or a nonmetal. And so metal reacting with hydrogen in water. So we have an example of potassium reacting with water to give us potassium hydroxide, which is a very strong base, and hydrogen gas. And this reaction actually gives off a lot of heat. And that's the illustration you see over here. The hydrogen will ignite and you end up with a flame happening in your uh, beaker of water if you add actually pure solid potassium not something we're going to do in class. And then in a similar type reaction, metal can replace hydrogen in an acid. And in this case, hydrogen is given off, but we see it only as bubbles. We don't see any flames. So the example I have here is magnesium reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce magnesium chloride and hydrogen gas. And then finally, our double replacement reaction. And in this case, you see the positive ions of two ionic compounds. So this is two compounds reacting. Those positive ions change places to form two new compounds. So an example I have here is potassium iodide reacting with lead 2 nitrate to give us potassium nitrate and lead iodide. So we see we have the potassium here with the iodine and then it ends up being with the nitrate. So it has changed places. The potassium and the lead have switched places. This example of reaction here, that yellow precipitate, that yellow solid that you see sort of falling down to the bottom of the test tube, is our lead iodide. It is um, a bright yellow substance. A special type of double replacement reaction is a neutralization reaction. And this is one that forms when you have acids and bases. So the standard um, explanation is that an acid and a base will react to form an ionic compound, which typically just calls a salt. So like our sodium chloride, we can make sodium chloride this way by reacting hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. And um, other ionic compounds also can just be called salt, sort of an old fashioned word. And along with that, you make water. So this is called a neutralization reaction because the properties of the acids and bases are removed by the reaction. The high pH of the base, the low pH of the acid go away. You end up with a neutral pH solution because of the water, which has a neutral pH. So the name comes from what's happening to the pH as the acid and the, ba and the base combine. You can see in the little illustration here, the hydrogen from the acid and the hydroxide from the base come together to make our water. And then what's left over is our salt, which in this example is sodium chloride. So that's a quick overview of these simple t reaction types. You will be practicing 
how to identify them by looking at a reaction, looking at what is combining, what or what is breaking down, what's happening to the reactants to form the products will help you decide what kind of reaction it is.